thank God it's just another day of the week. Forgive me if I don't see Friday as special. But welcome to the Morning Brief. I'm Kayado Kikulu and we are live in Lagos. All right, good morning, everyone. They've already told me not to say good, thank God it's Friday because it doesn't look like I have the weekend. But good morning and thank you for joining us on the show again. It's going to be a bumper package. I'm, I'm going to be that non-conformist. Thank God it's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then Friday. Come on, let's take a break. Let's wind down a little. So, if you say so. Just to psychologically prepare yourself that, okay, I may be working at the weekend for the people who work at the weekend, but maybe not as intense as it as happens uh, from Monday to Thursday and maybe Friday. So, hey, so all of us who are in the Thank God for Friday group, <laughs> let's embrace ourselves. <laughs> Thank God it's Friday. Welcome to the program. I'm Jeffrey Uzama. There probably needs to be some group. Yes, there, you should, know. there should be a group. And we should well, do Jeffrey a referendum. will head that group that. while we have the group of, of you know, every day it's just matters. Every day. Just like all lives matter, mm. all weekdays <laughs> matter, essentially. But it's quite interesting because I know there was a poll conducted. Um, people um, were asked, what is your favorite day of the week? And what is your worst day of the week? So mm -hmm. let me just conduct that poll. I know what the poll said eventually. What is your worst day of the week? I think it's uh, Tuesday somehow. Tuesday for you? Yeah. That's quite interesting, Jeffrey. What about you? I haven't thought about it, whether I have the worst day of the week. Maybe I haven't observed it well enough, right. depending on the week anyway. But, you know, when it's Monday, you're so used to resting at the weekend, and then you want to drag yourself out, like, okay, you got to get to work, you got to do this thing that you love and all of that. Yeah. So perhaps, but I haven't really sat down to say, okay, Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday is my worst mm. day of the week. I don't you, know. You don't I, have any experience, past experience that has made one day probably a bad day for you. And that's what I'm saying. It's it's neither here nor there. Okay. It's fluid for yeah. you. It's yes. fluid. It's neither so, here so nor maybe there. you should take note. We'll do our next uh, poll for you. <laughs> we'll leave that poll for you. We'll ask yeah. behind the scenes. I know. Every day is an opportunity to do new things. So Absolutely. that's why I see life, you know. Absolutely. You know, every day is an opportunity to True. Uh, correct an error of yesterday, uh, project for the next day and all of that. So maybe I haven't observed enough, you know. So some people, I guess it comes from a place of, oh, I rested on Saturday, I rested on Sunday. Oh, man, I'm going to go Jeffrey back. Jeffrey is work. lounging here, you know? No, and all rested of that. on Saturday, Jeffrey rested a, on Sunday. Jeffrey is a man of the year. But you know what the <laughs> poll actually said? Uh, it said that for most people, Monday... It's, it's the, worst. the worst. Yes, day. because they have rested the whole weekend and then, and then they have to think of waking up and, and start and again. Work. It's a recycle. Yeah, so Mondays are the best. Saturdays, sorry, Mondays are the worst, worst. for people. Saturdays are actually the best. Uh, the best for some people. So it's between Friday and Saturday. But today we're campaigning for every weekday. Imagine yes. if Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday were seated right here and they heard us saying, thank God it's Friday. <laughs> They'll feel sad. I mean, that's uh, emotional trauma. For them. Emotional need, trauma for need... people who work. <laughs> you know what? Let us know what you think. Uh, what's your favorite day of the week? It's just uh, trying to relax. It's been a long week, actually, particularly for us. Every week is always intense. Every day, actually, is always intense. But something that is big in the news, which give a, gives a lot of people some something to cheer about, uh, is the fact that the 3 MB, not 3 megabytes now, <laughs> the third mainland bridge, is now open. It felt like the bridge was closed for two decades, mm -hmm. really. I mean, <laughs> the repair started in January, but finally it is fully open to vehicle and movement. So that was that moment uh, that the bridge reopened. There you go. <sighs> you know, two words were used yesterday, scintillating, smooth, <laughs> Things that were, you start thinking, okay, I have to drive on this road. I have to, to see, to feel yeah. what it actually looks like. You should. If you're not in Lagos, if you do not stay in Ugh. Lagos, if you've never used that route, just know that it's one of the busiest routes in Lagos, one of the major routes in Lagos, because it connects what we call the mainland to the island. Yes. I'm not going to get into the mainland and island debate, but basically it connects to... to <laughs> Don't go there, Coyote. <laughs> yes, it was not. Don't do the mainland I'm not going so to do island. That. So the people who are not familiar with Lagos, so this carries hundreds of thousands of vehicles every day 11 kilometers that stretch you're seeing uh, all the way from Oro down to identity down uh, down to the uh, island and well as we said let's not get into that mainland island battle <laughs> but of course more people live on the mainland um, if we look at the numbers at the end of the day so uh, but when you hear the global headquarters of banks in Nigeria 
you are heading to the mainland, a call to be precise. The island. So, to islands, the island, I, yeah. I beg your pardon, a call to be precise. So, literally all the full guys, every other bank, and so many, many corporates are down there at the island. So, but a couple of these people either live somewhere in Aja, which is way down the island, and then all the island. <laughs> Somebody say, say there is mainland, there is, there is mainland, there is island, there is the other land. <laughs> You've so got there's to the land. In case you live in the, on the free land or the other land. But it's a beautiful thing to see. It was, a, it's quite, it was, it was quite difficult at, this, at some point because of the construction that was going on. But yeah. to see this stretch, uh, the markings, the everything, just lovely. I haven't gone to the main, uh, island for a bit. Yeah. Uh, oh. But this just wants to make me drive down through this. Very you know how tempting stretch. this road is also. Yes. So you have to actually be very careful when you're on it. So they've uh, talked about speed limits. Exactly. Driving cautiously when you're on this road because it is tempting. And that is a big part of the conversation which we need to drive down this morning. There is now a speed limit for those who will be plying third mainland. I we imagine need someone could have speed limit. Yeah, we need to put it... <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm laughing per hour. Why? <laughs> Don't worry. I'll that is you. a new speed limit, guys. <laughs> so just in case you plan to go to the island this morning or you plan to come to the mainland using the third mainland bridge, please keep your eyes on your odometer or what some people call speedometer. Uh. But basically, you know that gauge on your dashboard that just counts from 0 to 160, <laughs> 180, depending on the vehicle you use. Keep your eyes on it and ensure <laughs> you do not go past 80 kilometers per hour. If you're using miles, it is 49, or is it 49.7 miles per hour? And for those who think no one is watching, people are actually watching you. So if you think you can be smart and just do 100 and 120. So there, there, there's a technology on the bridge right yes. now that will capture you if you go beyond 80 kilometers. Kaede, let's use the one that we're familiar with. Right. With miles, we're miles. not familiar with. You know, some, yeah. some odometers uh, have yes. the dual, so uh, some people see the MPH. MPH. Oh, uh, the so, km per hour. Okay, so be careful. 80 kilometers per hour is what is allowed on the third mainland bridge right now. Because if you don't, if you exceed that limit, the camera will capture you. And nobody's going to have a conversation. There's no I last know, I think so. A lot of people already have that experience with no. captures yeah, exactly. for those who have expired number plates. Mm -hmm. I mean, so they know that experience that it's so. not, uh, it's either you do it or you get into trouble. So. No, just, just to put it in context, some people may be visiting Lagos for the first time. Uh, okay. So for the back <laughs> Johnny just they may just see this stretch. I say, oh Lord, this is good for F1 race. Formula One. You will F yourself into some fun. <laughs> Because the camera yes, will catch you. Fine. Okay, you I will like find that. yourself where you want to renew your papers. So, okay, you're owing. <laughs> what happened? They'll play for you. Oh, yeah. This is the record. It's either you do or you do. Let's break it down to the Nigerian power. Absolutely. So, so be careful out uh, there when you're driving. Also, I'm sure they did that because of, um, just for safety. Yes, for safety. So don't, don't overdo yourself. Whether you're a commercial, a commercial vehicle or a private vehicle, whatever kind of vehicle you drive, whether you're a Molue or you're a BROT, however you use that road, please do not exceed 80 kilometers. And I had a CCTV as well. So the way Lagos does sometimes yeah. is that it's a combination of both. So inside the camera, uh, inside the lights or the the what do you call that thing? Uh, the there's sensor. A name. The or sensor. There are, there are so many things inside those sensors right. that captures different things uh, on that third Milan bridge. So we hope that this will be implemented at the end of the day, so that everyone uh, will be safe and happy. But we congratulate the federal government on this one as well as the Lagos State. Government. This is federal government, by the way. So let, yeah. let's give them their Which applause. Which partnership, the really, because it's yeah. domiciled in Lagos as well. So we congratulate uh, the federal government on this particular bridge because there was really, really, it was really difficult at some point. I think we have some sound bites uh, yeah. of some persons who spoke, including the controller works. Uh, uh, maybe we'll take a listen to that and come back. If it is not subject to abuse, on this road we're not talking of maintenance in the next two years. Minimum of two years, if we don't have any abuse on the road. So then, as far as speed limit, I've mentioned earlier that the speed limit has been curtailed to 80. It's going to be displayed conspicuously now at the median. And then there will be speed limiting devices that will catch or capture anyone that is overstepping that. 
and you have Lagos State government to deal with at the renewal of your life vehicle license. I'm using this opportunity to appeal to everyone that there will be zero tolerance on anyone caught trying to mess around or destroy the infrastructure that has been put in place. This is for us all and we should embrace it and keep it. At the end of the day, the difficulty, the challenges have been worth it. I've done a few times back when one side or the other side was open. It's a fantastic work. The problem we have in the country, we need continuous maintenance on the road that will make the road be very, very be perfect. Kudos to the government, for our government, I mean, kudos to the Lagos government as well, that also in a way support them because if you bring something to a particular state, a bridge, it takes the government there to support them. So, so there you have yeah. it, guys. As uh, we're congratulating the uh, government, I think we should also congratulate the people. I mean, for those who had had very horrible experiences on that road, right now it's free, it's very nice to drive on, but also be cautious as you go. Consider other people on the road. Would I have also like to hear your experiences. If you have driven on that road, let's know what it feels like. And for those with a penchant for stealing assets of the federal government or yes. the nation, please. We are begging you now. Now is an appeal because mm -hmm. they are saying, <laughs> yeah, the, the language the guy used was a military term. Don't mess around. No, 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 no. Please, uh, for those who have a penchant for, when you look at that thing, instead of being happy, you're thinking of what to take away to destroy it. Uh, it's not really correct. It's not really nice. So please, vandals and all of that, stay away from federal assets or national assets, including the one you're looking at, which is the Third Midland Bridge. We also want to hear from you. What has been your experience so far as a user of the Third Mainland Bridge? We'd like to hear from you on, on, um, on X as well as on Instagram. No, not on Instagram. On WhatsApp, I should say. Why did I mention Instagram? Because you don't Instagram. Instagram. Why, why well. did you call it? <laughs> why, 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 Oh so there you have it, and that just essentially ties into all of the big stuff we have for you on the show this morning. Don't forget, you have to fight temptation on that road. Mm. <laughs> we, can't, not, we can't stress that over. Do not hit that morning. accelerator yeah. beyond 80 kilometers per hour. So mm. yes, indeed, the third <laughs> mainland bridge is finally open in its entirety after months of closure for much needed repairs. It may have been... Uh, three months, but it felt like years to road users who had to seek alternatives. So, absolutely, uh, the quality of work done there and the rest, that's a big, big conversation uh, that we have for you on the show this morning. And some of them, we expect that you would let us know what is the quality of work done, having plied that route perhaps this morning or yesterday after it was opened. Let us know. The solar lights being installed. Have you seen that as well? Let us know. Did you catch a glimpse of the CCTV? Let's interact with you on the show this morning. But that's not all we have for you. Uh, all right. So apart from that issue, we also have another one, which is the passport issuance process in Nigeria. It was once nightmarish for a lot of people, but it appears that things are gradually changing add to that the proposal for localizing passport production but what's been the experience of nigerians at home abroad with a new process we hear firsthand on the show today so you can also share yours with us especially if you are in the diaspora and that's the whole plus he calls himself kairi need to help me on this is it faluya faluya of africa <laughs> which <laughs> kind of means master drum beater and that's putting it mildly. Dress sticks or dress sticks as he calls himself joins us to speak on the journey of an independent artist. They call them indies uh, in this Nigerian music industry which heavily influenced by level. So let's hear from this lovely performer what it means to be an indie artist in the country and how they are thriving uh, without being signed to any record label. Oh. Absolutely. So it's quite interesting. You, you may have caught his, his work uh, doing covers, doing the faluya. Doing the faluya, tearing the drum. <laughs> that's that, what, that's it what, it what it means. <laughs> In the language. As we said earlier on, uh, you can be a part of the show, particularly because on the show this morning, we'll have some exercise. Mm. We're doing stretches today. So 
you will get a chance to exercise with us. We have our trainer coming in. So we just deconstruct the set and do some good exercise for your mind, for your body, for your muscle. You do not want to miss this. So stay with us just less than two hours. We have a full package for you. You can join us on X and on WhatsApp. You see those numbers on your screen. If you can't watch a normal television, do YouTube and share this with people because today's show will do you some real good. good. So let's start with the top stories, shall we? In a couple of seconds, we'll bring you the top stories. Stay with us. Stories on the brief at this hour. We start off with President Bola Tinubu's optimism that Nigeria's economy is at a turning point and will require the step and support of the private sector for sustained growth and prosperity. Well, he was speaking during the breaking of the fast day in the nation's capital, Abuja, with members of the Nigerian business community whom he appreciated for their support. Now, according to the statement by the special advisor on media and publicity to the president, Ajuri Galali, President Tinubu reiterated his commitment to fulfilling his mandate, emphasizing that he cannot afford to underperform given the trust placed on him by the electorate. Let's talk security now. The Inspector General of the Police, Mr. Lukaudi Agbetoku, has been given an update on the efforts of the police force to fulfill its mandate of securing lives and properties in the first quarter of the year. Well, the IGP, who was speaking during a meeting with the force management team in Abuja, announced that nine persons have been arrested in connection with the killings of six policemen in Ugeli Dell's estate, with six others at large. Mr. Agbetoku says those arrested are currently given the force information that will aid in the arrest of those who were involved in the killings. The abduction and killing of six of our personnel during a special operation at Ifu Forest, Ugeli North, local government of Delta State, on 26 February 2024, is a sole testament to the hazards confronting us daily as we strive to keep our country safe. The entire police family is deeply pained by the heinous act of violence against our officers in the ordinary course of their duties. We have made significant progress in the investigation into this tragic incident. A total of nine suspects confirmed to have been actively involved in the killing of these officers have so far been apprehended and are currently assisting in unraveling the circumstances surrounding the unfortunate incident. Well, it's not just the arrests that the police has been doing. It's also been said that the police just promoted over 10,000 officers of the force. But we'll bring you more details uh, on the show. But staying with security, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tarid Lagbata, says the nation's armed forces are demonstrating resilience in the face of adversity and working to effectively address the diverse security challenges within the nation. The Army Chief underscored this commitment during his inaugural annual lecture series titled The Role of the Military in Safeguarding Nigeria's National Interests and Security emphasized that despite manpower constraints, the Nigerian Armed Forces have attained the status of the fourth most powerful military in Africa. The three arms of the Armed Forces of Nigeria are inadequately manned, which applies to other security agencies. In a country of 226 million people, it is impossible for the totality of security agencies of about 2 million or the armed forces of Nigeria, about 200,000 active personnel, without a reserve force to secure the entire populace. The armed forces of Nigeria have displayed progress amid adversities and are striving to mitigate and transform its internal structures, training, procurement, and acquisition of modern weapons, among others to respond to the varied security threats in the nation and abroad. And as we told you earlier, motorists who ply the Third Mainland Bridge can now heave a sigh of relief as the bridge has now been reopened uh, after two months of repairs. After reopening, the federal controller works in Lagos State Corridor, Keisha. However, says anyone who drives beyond 80 kilometers per hour in the bridge will be in violation of the acceptable speed limit, which is 80, and will be liable to a penalty. She also decried the destructive tendency of some motorists who barely care about how their activities affect the bridge. 
And to politics now. Barely 24 hours after threatening to spring a surprise on his political opponents, the River State Governor, Similai Fubara, is firing another salvo. But this time, he is rejecting any changes to the list of caretaker committee members of the People's Democratic Party in the state. The governor's remarks come after concerns raised by his supporters about the list of state and local government caretaker committee members published by the party's National Working Committee. We had a meeting and we agreed that not just the river state but all the state affected the high schools should be extended for three months. This extension is not bringing in new names. The extension also did not say you are working without the authority of the governor. So for those lists you saw and those was altered, I can assure you is not going to stand. Thank you! For, 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 for record purposes, yeah. so that you understand, yeah. we also agreed that we are going to have, in fact, there is a neck meeting on the 18th of this month that should ratify that decision. So what you are seeing there is desperate people who like media, who like people to to just empty, 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 empty drum. Thank you, sir. Well, it appears to be a river of unending political intrigues because the River State chapter of the Old Progressives Congress, APC, has been reacting to another comment of the governor on the implementation of the Presidential Peace Pact. The River's APC caretaker chairman, Mr. Tony Okocha, while speaking to journalists in Port Harcourt, the state capital, accuses the governor of being economical with the truth. He wants to procure interim order restraining or is stopping the implementation of the laws which he was vetoed over. He wants to procure an order to announce as illegal the River State House of Assembly as constituted and as led by Right Honorable Martins, TK, Amebule. Reading through the eight points <coughs> above, will it be true to say that in this is six and eight have been implemented? What are six and eight? That you present a budget to the legitimate assembly recognized by Mr. President as being headed by Right Honorable Martins, TK, and everybody, that you could represent the budget. I'm asking the press, has that been done? <clears throat> now, how the, um, the in the state, which of course uh, directed the governor to conduct an election, and never recognize any other nomenclature in the local government. Has it been done? Again, you are all aware that by a fusion of time, by a fusion of time, the governor's blatant refusal to conduct election, of course, goes to affect the instant laws, the instant laws of River State. And of course, it's a blatant, a deliberate attempt to disrespect and disobey Mr. President. Well, away from politics now, reactions have continued to trail the increase in electricity tariff for Band A customers. Well, the cross-section of Nigerians say the timing is poor, considering the high cost of living in the country from the Magodo area of Lagos State to Asokoro, the nation's capital, Abuja. By the way, these are two areas classified under Band A, and the news is not well received to these people. I just drove in now before you stopped me. You check my car. It's diesel and uh, fuel I went to buy. So, it's sad, sad, sad. With all those uh, um, um, 
uh, low quality service we get, you're adding, you're saying um, uh, it's not 255 uh, per kilowatt. Strange and such. Like this street you are on, uh, you're, you're in now, the zone you're in, we, we normally pay close to 180,000 naira every month to power the street lights. So you're going to times it by four. You know what that means? Do you, do you get what I'm saying? There's already a hardship. People are going through a lot concerning uh, inflation. Now you're adding this one to it. You get another light. Like, you know what they have to do? When, when, when there's proper lighting in the place, what you get is like security is tight. Where I'm coming from, my office, there's no light since morning. There's no light, and they are just offering, on, offering, uh, you can burn anything for this, and they are increasing. It's very, very bad. Okay, they're talking about palliatives uh, for people, and then suddenly this one comes again. So it's like uh, robbing Peter to pay Paul things. Well, elsewhere, the chairman of a kind of state anti-corruption and public complaints commission, Mui Magaji, has been suspended from his position by the Code of Conduct Tribunal following a 10-count charge of corruption filed against him by the Code of Conduct Bureau on November the 16th last year. The suspension was announced in a statement issued by the Chief Press Secretary of the CCB, Mrs. Veronica Kato. According to Mrs. Kato, the decision to suspend Laji Magaji is to ensure that he does not interfere with the ongoing trial against him, which has been adjourned to May the 7th and 8th, 2024, for further hearings. We'll stay with legal matters. The EFCC has filed six count charge against Idris Olariwaju Okunaye, popularly known as Bob Risky. Oh, Bob Risky will be arraigned uh, before Justice Abimbola Aruburu of Lagos Federal High Court, or the Federal High Court in Lagos. Uh, while the first four counts of charge border on abuse of the Naira, the last two border on alleged money laundering. In count five, Bob Risky is accused of trading under the name and style of Bob Express between September 1st, 2021 and April 4th, 2024 in Lagos failed to submit the special control to the special control unit against money laundering a declaration of the activities of the said company with a total sum of 127.7 million naira paid into its account domiciled uh, with echo bank and in count six bob Risky is also accused of failing to submit a declaration of the activities of a company within the same period when another 53 million naira was paid into the company's account Let's talk business now. The Naira has maintained its rebound against the U.S. dollar across the official and parallel markets. And this is on increased dollar supply. The local currency is strengthened by 1.42% against the dollar to 1,258 Naira, 45 cob on Thursday. From 1,276 Naira, 59 cob a quarter the previous day. And analysts expect rates to trade around these levels tomorrow, barring any significant market activity. Also, experts from financial derivatives companies say they expect that the impact of the gain will lead to a reduction in commodities prices in the coming days as Naira is beginning to regain its fair value. Well, outside the country, the U.S. has told Israel that its ongoing support on the Gaza war is dependent on specific concrete steps to boost aid and prevent civilian deaths. President Joe Biden spoke to Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in the wake of the deaths of seven World Central Kitchen staff on Monday, an incident with which Israel apologized for, calling it a grave mistake. However, in a readout of a telephone call between the two leaders, which lasted less than 30 minutes, the White House said that the president emphasized that the strikes on humanitarian workers and the overall humanitarian situation are unacceptable. Mr. Biden faces pressure to rein in unconditional military aid for Israel. To the world of sports, 5 p.m. today, Nigeria Super Falcons will be facing the Bayana Bayana of South Africa in a crucial Olympic qualifier. And coach Randy Waldrum says the nine-time African champions are not taking anything for granted against the reigning African champions at the MKO Abiola Stadium. The Super Falcons last Olympic participation dates back to 2008, and the coach admits they want to make things right this time around.
and even though we had a few late arrivals to camp, um, you know, and we, it's been well documented. We have a couple of key injuries, um, but I think the players that we have are ready to step up and um, and show their worth of being selected, you know, to this team uh, to show that they can do the job as well. And we, have, as a staff, we have all the confidence in um, in the players that are here, uh, ready to play. And and so, you know, on the day, it's there's no excuses one way or the other. It's we have what we have, they have what they have, and it's it'll be which team shows up, you know, the most prepared and, and ready to, to get the result. I mean, all the Minister of Sports Development, Senator John Eno, is asking all sports lovers to come all out to support the Super Eagles. I should say the Super Falcons, actually, at the MKR Biela Stadium. He believes that with the home support, the team can get the job done before they jet out to Pretoria for the second leg on Tuesday. Every support we need to give this team, we should give this team. I mean, it's um, my hope, and I try to engage and see how much publicity can actually be given and can be made in the remaining time that there is. You know, because I mean, there's no fun playing at home when you don't find the crowd and the spectators having to cheer you up. Then it makes a home match almost the same like playing away. So my hope is that that will not just be allowed to the NFF or to the ministry, but that all the journalists that are here, the entire media people, you know, use every means that is available to them to promote this match and to encourage people to come and watch and to cheer this thing up. So let's hope the Super Falcons will repeat what the Super Eagles did at the AFCON. But let's take a look at what you are saying now about some of these big stories where in the realm of feedback, comments, and the rest. Jeffrey, of course, joins me Absolutely. to do this one. So, it's a community show, as I've always said. Yeah. That's why we love to hear what you're saying on any of the issues. But I was just smiling when I was looking at the, what was playing out in River State. You know, mm. uh, when you look at the resolution, the eight-point resolution, it's clear that it's going to be difficult to find a resolution at the end of the day because egos are playing out there are constitutional issues and all of that the governor is saying look what i agreed to is out of respect for the president yeah. and it's a political resolution because how do i represent the, the there are so many the guy they call it the the theater of the absurd because okay. he had presented the budget to a four-member house which passed in 24 hours and these men defected to the apc section 109 subsection 1g there's an argument around the status of their defection are they really members of the assembly so on all sides <laughs> there, there are so many things going going on i don't want to say going wrong so let's see how that plays out but that's not what we're talking about let's find out what you're saying yeah. we've talked about it but let's hear from you the third mainland bridge let's start from there uh Tessie says Babajide Sonwolu must be applauded and commended for being able to start and complete adequately the extended repairs work on the third mainland bridge. Lagosians can now apply the third mainland bridge with the assurance of their safety, a Kony budget. For the record, yeah. it's not a Lagos state project. That's why you see the... the, the yes, the, 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 it has the, nothing to do with government. The Ministry of Babajide. Work. Yes. Uh, okay. that's, you, could, you could see here, uh, that's the Federal yeah. Ministry of Work. It's a federal project, so yeah. it's the Federal Ministry of Work. So but that's not to take away the fact that mm. there was partnership. Yes, you of course. You could see the last yes, of course. official that's the Lagos State Transport and Management Authority also involved. So yes, it's a partnership, but it's a, a project spearheaded uh, by the Federal Ministry of Works. That's why you saw the Federal Controller of Works, although she's in Lagos, uh, doing that alongside other Lagos officials. So yeah, a partnership, but spearheaded by uh, the federal government. But that's not all uh, that has been said about this. Speed limit, of course, has gotten a lot of people talking, particularly because sometimes in this part of the world, mm. people are not used to speed limit. Yeah, they just see it as a suggestion. <laughs> so they see speed limit 40 or 60, they think, okay, that's a suggestion. And they go ahead to hit the accelerator and they're doing 100 on a 60 road. So this next one uh, is from Akoredi underscore sound saying speed limit should be installed on that bridge with speed camera, please. Thank you for your commitment uh, to a prosperous Just resource. to help you give an update, it's been installed and you've been advised. And, and I think it's an yeah. ongoing process yes, as well, so the installation and Be and sure and that as smooth as that road is, don't be tempted. Yeah. Nigeria will say, no, do pass yourself. Just stay within the limit. Um, Olufumi Elizabeth Alfred says, 
This is highly commendable, I must say. Bravo on the job, well executed. A lot of people are saying GD Sonwulu governor. Okay, I understand it's in Lagos, but it's a federal project. As we said, of course, Lagos had a role to play to, to, and all of that. So yeah, everybody should get their kudos, right? So this is not holding any kudos. Take yeah, your kudos. No, not at all. <laughs> kudos. The next one is from uh, Homie Bishop. And this is, uh, you know, this, this particular post starts with the typical Nigeria term. When you see Omo starting a uh, sentence, it doesn't mean child. As a, as a word implies in Yoruba language, it's just an expression, an expression of surprise or excitement. This bridge done too fine. Sawalu has tried, please let's give him his flowers. Okay. Okay. Polity, Polity Niger, we can't re-emphasize again. Let's just keep going. Uh, the planning and execution was astound, astounding. Uh, inconveniences minimized and uh, contained economic disruption well considered and property addressed uh, properly reached, addressed okay, properly addressed okay, right. I didn't say that. Uh, reached to life and property well assessed and managed things well projected Time and kept Lagosians and last month quite cooperative okay I like the whole just a summary it's poetic it's very poetic. very informative Okay, very informative. Um, we, we like that policy night. Yeah. Um, and every other, but keep it, I mean, keep it coming. So that's it with Third Mainland Bridge. But let us know about your experience. Have you applied that route? Uh, someone said, oh, Moi, fine. But when you applied it, uh, what was your experience like? Or what is your experience like right now? Perhaps you're on that bridge. And Maybe they can even, as they're applying, well, I don't expect them to be okay, watching so television. You're not driving the one uh, But the show is passenger. It's on until 9 o'clock. So in case you're driving to the mainland, or to the, to the island, or coming from the mainland, uh, please you can take a picture or do a short video as much as you can and send it to us on our WhatsApp number. And uh, if we have the time, we're going to amplify it for you. Oh, yes. I know okay. a lot of people have said, it's just a thought. It's, I mean, it's just a given. These things happen in other clients. Mm. Why are you celebrating? It's just a move on. But if you've had an accident on that route, <laughs> if your tire, if you had tire issues because your you car got into a pothole, uh, or exactly, that's... And then those boys just come, down, come out from under the water. I yeah. don't know where they come out from. They just, <laughs> they just come out from somewhere. Yeah, then, then you know understand. that this is worth celebrating. By the way, security is also important. So let's turn our attention to another big story yep. that played out yesterday and concerns Binance. I recall that one of the executives uh, in Nigeria eloped. Okay, maybe eloped is not the right term. Escaped from custody. It's still at large. Right. So one of them was arraigned yesterday. The other one was still in custody was arraigned uh, and the one that escaped in absentia plus Binance Holdings Limited. So uh, they appeared in court, one of course in absentia, and this is what people must, are saying. Uh, we start off with um, real Tory saying that we must not tolerate foreigners exploiting our system. That's what real Tory Inc. Uh, says about this one. So humanity can follow a better way. All right. So this is coming from Conrad F. Fax says, I hope those that are involved in this escape from custody would also be arraigned in court too. I totally agree. If you find them to be complicit, let them have their day in court. Prem World, Prem underscore World, uh, saying that this is actually funny. Uh, Binance matter, that you arrested Binance representatives who have no influence whatsoever in the company. And that's what this user thinks. Mm. Uh, but that's quite <coughs> interesting, but because it's been said, particularly about uh, the one who escaped, that he's also been responsible uh, for some of some people describe it as a good work being done in Binance out of either, is it Kenya mm. uh, or Africa at large? That's not being Anjawawa. Exactly. So, I mean, in, in that context, and you understand that well, these people have some influence. Uh, they do. Uh, I think one of the things that stalled the arraignment yesterday, for the record, is the fact that the FIRS did not serve Gabriana, one of the uh, yeah. uh, uh, defendants. Gambarine. So, so we, 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 we look at all of that. So a man says, so I guess it's safe to say these Binance guys were manipulating our economy behind the scene. Allegations. Let's put that out, okay? And Naira has been strengthening since the arrest. There's a lot about this, naturally. Um, crypto is a touchy one for a lot of people because that's where the investments are in. That's where Especially they trade young people. Yeah, Funny enough, I've seen old people actually. They've done the free. Also getting involved. I mean, it's it's investment for a lot of people. So whether yeah. you're young or old, as far as you have that investment mindset, is something to consider. For some other people, it is a no-no. So keep those comments coming in. Hashtag CTV Morning Brief. Or you can just do what's up right there. But let's move from the Binance conversation and talk economy.
The president has been speaking about the economy. In fact, the question is, when is he not speaking about the economy? But one of the videos, or statements and comments of the president uh, that trended is where the president said to Nigerians, don't worry about inflation, we'll bring it down. So we'd like you to take a listen to what the president said about inflation. You know where inflation is right now. It's above uh, 30%. 31.7%. Exactly. So we'll bring it down. The target for this government was in the 20s. 21. Exactly. But now it is in the 30s. So take a listen to what the president said, and we'll take a look at what Nigerians have been saying about this. You promised them a good result. Yes. Didn't you? Yes. That's it. I have to work for it. No magic wand. I campaign on hope. I have to rest on that hope and push for that hope for the joy of every one of us. The economic is looking good. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Yes, we know we have the challenge of inflation. It's okay. We will bring it down. We are re-engineering. Our revenue is getting better. And we are taking our sovereignty and respect back around the world. <laughs> Not that we have to go there and hire them to do the job for us. We are doing it ourselves. Whatever is happening to us, we have to solve it by ourselves. There you go, the president speaking. Don't worry, we'll bring down inflation. And uh, we'll take a look at the comment by Abuna Baba. Abuna Baba is asking for a plan or a strategy to this, perhaps saying maybe hope is not a strategy, really. So Abuna Baba says this one from Tinubu is pretty bold, considering that inflation is a complex economic issue that can be hard to control. I'm curious what his plan is to bring inflation down. I think people will appreciate more details about how he plans to accomplish this. I know he talked about revenue. Uh, getting better, they're doing better with revenue. Uh, talked about we have to be the ones to solve our problems, and we're getting uh, what? What did you say about? I think respect. Yeah, and our sovereignty. Our yeah. sovereignty. Yeah, that's the one. So, is that all of the strategy? Well, that's a big question from Abuna Baba. I think the president also spoke as a politician, uh, quite bravely. His choice of words, you must be attentive to politicians when they speak. And right. coming from the president, he said, we will bring it down. He did not necessarily say he's going to go back to 21%, right. uh, as the assumption of the budget is. So let's see what that down means. Because there was a time uh, we heard some people say power will be resolved in six months. And then they talked about incrementally, uh, it's incremental increase. I don't even know how to put it at some point when they were being challenged. So oh, all of this. So you have to pay attention to the way. But he is quite audacious right. in his hope. Yeah. And, and we pray that this works out eventually for all of us because inflation at 31.7 as well as uh, food inflation at 37 is not funny. This is coming from a holy habit. It says, don't only bring down inflation, bring down corruption as eating the country so deep. Oh, yeah. Royalty sparkles, says, yet he's increasing electricity tariff. <laughs> That's like to shave uh, from this user. Removed subsidy and other things that will have curtailed inflation. So, again, the question is, how does he intend to do so? And uh, Bragas underscore group says, I respect the fact that he acknowledged the challenges and the inflammation in your words. Hopefully... I, I don't know whether he wanted to say, say inflation, but hopefully we are heading somewhere. Hope, as he said, is what he campaigned on, and he keeps trying to put out that hope as much as possible. But let's see. Uh, some people say hope is not a strategy. What we want to see is those numbers come down practically. Food inflation come down. Headline inflation come down. The cost of uh, living come down as much as possible. Wages go up to match up. We have some level of stability so we can plan yeah. and project and extrapolate. Well, this next trend will interest you. And um, I'll, just, I'll just put it out there for you. And then we'll take a look at some of the comments on this. Uh, and that is the fact that 
I need to quote this properly. <laughs> Cano State has banned hooliganism and cross-dressing in films. Yeah. <laughs> so let me just Cano define State what government. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let me just define what hooliganism is. It's a violent or rowdy behavior by young troublemakers, typically in a gang. So it appears that this is now being banned, not in real life alone, but in the make-believe world of movies. And it's gotten a lot of people talking. Child Health Hero says they can only ban it in public cinemas. They can't control what people access on their mobile phones and um, perhaps a little background to this or maybe not let's just take a look at your comments and move on because i'm uh, curious to find yeah. out what they mean by banning in films exactly because there's something called uh is it creative justice uh, creative liberty and right. all of that yeah so uh Kaxi essien says that is the first step forward we need more of this so yeah, there's more of where that came from, really. Uh, this one is from Opsilo underscore J, and saying it's a good move. That's how this comment starts. Good move. For a significant change to happen in our society, the need to regularize the kind of content our movie producers put out cannot be overemphasized. Now, take a look at this next slide. The next thing I need government to do is to ban any movie that gives potency to ritual and blood money. So for a moment, let's just picture this. Um, how would you then depict uh, a exactly. gang in a movie? Uh, again, you can be creative about it. I'm just saying, if you have to operate under this it's, context. It's, it's, it's going to be a very dicey one to implement. Because so, it, how do you reflect hooliganism right. if it is the true situation of things? Because mm -hmm. movies about reflecting what's going on in society. Except you just want to gag them. So maybe the Kano State government will come and explain what they mean. Is it just going to be temporary? Is it going to be permanent? What exactly are you trying to get at uh, with, this one. with all of this? I don't even want to talk about cross-dressing because we can know where that tape has to yeah, in terms absolutely. of culture and our values and all of that. But issues around hooliganism, that's going to be a bit controversial. So skit makers, yeah. uh, maybe that won't work anymore. If you have a script that has hooliganism in it, you might want to change that script to a love story, just to love. Change all of the violence. <laughs> I, imagine. I can imagine. And I hope this, they are going to back this up by legislation. Because well, it was announced by the Executive yeah, Secretary it's of the Kano State Censorship Board, uh, Abba El Mustafa. So do we so, have a so law they yet? Take, if they take thing. a content creator, a filmmaker to the courts, mm. how are you going to define Huliga? Are you going to define it based on what Google says or what the dictionary says or what the Nigerian society considers Huligan? What exactly are you going to define it by? So it's easy to make this policy statement, but when you're in the face of the law, law is uh, justice according to the law it, it may be a challenge but i we know where they're getting at but it has to be done within the ambits of the law all right uh alien exchange said that's why i love the northerners they are very strict every day they do bad uh, things but they don't showcase it to well allegation because it will mislead their people i wish we would all learn from them that was almost difficult for me to read eh? oh yeah it was a tricky one yeah. so let's just dovetail into another one and it kind of ties into this one particularly the cross-dressing part mm -hmm. and that is the fact that EFCC to arraign Bob Risky from alleged money laundering today oh yes so any moment from now we'll be breaking that uh, they arrested to him for, uh, uh, for something else entirely. for something else and yes. they arraign him for money because I know you contravene section 21 subsection 3 yeah which well, uh, part of the charges actually okay. uh, the, the part money about um, the, the naira yeah. uh treating mutilation. the naira mutilation and the rest and of, spraying and spraying exactly yeah. which you know a lot of people see videos and they wonder what's going on can't we just do something about this so it appears the fcc uh, stepping it up so uh first comment by lucky with a lot of figures after that well this will be a good start for Nigeria society needs sanity and this shouldn't just be about bob alone but rather as a way of extension to all the sundry that mutilate the naira so from the politicians otherwise the celebrities to everyday people that mm. are doing owambe today tomorrow you but but, to but fine. when you look at the law the law itself has to be amended yeah. the only strong part of that law is that i think you've been in prison for six months or you pay fifty thousand naira or both so maybe it's at the discretion of the judge to decide. 50,000 naira to anyone is literally yeah. nothing. So maybe you spray 1 million, set aside 50,000. 50,000. 50, so just maybe, maybe if the judge is in a bad mood, you are going to go to prison oh, yeah. and, and just uh, face the law because it's, it's also part of the provision. It's either you go to prison for six months or so, three or six months, 
or you pay 50,000 naira, section 21, subsection 1, uh, 3 or so. Uh, Obotech says, money laundering charges, quite a serious allegation. I wonder how Bobrisky will handle this allegation. Yeah, it runs, this into, situation. Yeah, it runs into over 100 million naira, uh, those charges when you put them together. Mm. So there's a lot more that you're saying about the Bob Risky situation. Don't forget, he'll be arraigned uh, later today. And this one says, it's infuriating that I'm Collins of Barra to see individuals like Bob Risky involved in alleged money laundering activities after uh, all the show of shame you say don't forget these are allegations everyone should be held accountable under the law regardless of their status or influence uh the rock at the rock 50 a month passing his sentence already but risky must be sentenced for six months a lady was punished for the same offense well the judge has that discretion is still an allegation in the law under the law even if you're caught red-handed the law says you're still innocent until uh, you're declared guilty by a competent, a court of competent jurisdiction and all of the grammar they speak in law. So, yeah, that's how it works. So, two comments to go on this one. The last one will get you, but let me take the first one. <laughs> Dem Ayoruf Uyo says, money laundering with a question mark. This is a calculated plan to punish him for influencing the youth negatively. It's my thought though. So when you always put the caveat as my thought though, it doesn't take away the fact that you already, you already said it. made a major allegation. You're saying this is calculated plans to punish him for influencing the youth. Uh, that's not fair really. And uh, you know, to the agents that's EFCC involved, it's not really fair, except you have concrete evidence so that you will not explain, <laughs> as they say, tire without evidence. So it's important to watch what you put out there on social media. Even though it's your thought, always ensure you convey it appropriately. Put the right caveats so that you do not get in trouble. Uncle Sam, this is going to be an amusing one, an interesting one as well. I said, I look, is, I'm, I guess one is, I'm looking forward to seeing what he will be addressed as in the law court. Will Babriski be seen as a woman, a man? No, but um, ASO Progress already said it, what he will be addressed as. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I think, that, I think he, he, he's just, he just wants to be tricky. So uh, I know he had a, a fight with Portable on over that. One. that. And Portable had to make a record on, <laughs> about that altercation, whether brotherhood or sisterhood, I don't know the title of that. So, okay. well, the judge will make a decision as to how it will be addressed. Uh, but Risky is going to face, have his day in court, and uh, we'll see how things play out. But hey, those are the things we've been tracking for you on uh, X. Don't forget, it's not just X we're talking about, or as well as our WhatsApp number. So. Whatever you have to say, videos as well as messages, send it to our WhatsApp number. I'm sure at some point you'll be screening, showing on your screen, yeah. so you can have that conversation with us. We say it's a conversation, it's a community show, it's a Friday, it's chill, relax, enjoy, have fun. Uh, let's have a great show together. So Can let's get the show on the road. Okay, no, the Melon Bridge County Road is still on the road. <laughs> We're maintaining our speed limit as well. We have such a package for you. We'll go on a moment, or a momentous break, and when we return, we'll have more for you. Stay with us. This is Morning Break.
president and deputy president of the Senate being welcomed to the State House by President Bola Tinubu. They're here for a short ceremony involving a significant bill. Also present is the Chief of Staff to the President, the Minister and Minister of State for Education, the Minister of State for Youth, the President of the National Association of Nigerian Students, other government officials and aides to the President. It is in time for the signing of the Student Loan Bill 2024, which repeals the Act passed in 2023. It was a short ceremony. Afterwards, the president emphasized the importance of education in the fight against poverty. Education is the tool to fight against poverty effectively. We are determined to ensure education is given the proper attention necessary for the country, including skill development programs. This is to ensure that no one, no matter how poor their background is, is excluded from quality education and opportunity to build their future. In the previous act, some problems were identified and addressed in this act. The changes include the Nigerian Education Loan Fund is now a corporate body with a board of directors, a chairman, secretary and members drawn from the relevant ministries, regulatory bodies and participating agencies. The removal of the family income threshold so Nigerian students can apply for these loans and accept responsibility for repayment according to the fund's guidelines. The removal of the guarantor requirement so that students can apply for and receive loans subject to application and identity verification guidelines as provided by the fund, amongst other changes. The Minister of Education and the NAMS President speak on the significance of the event. Now the days when students will be struggling to sponsor themselves uh, in their various educational endeavors is over, both at the tertiary and those who are seeking skills, who are seeking to be skilled, to be empowered, you know, to move on in with their lives. So it's a very great day for the country. We will see Mr. President's commitment to the development of education. And today, the entire education system is happy. The Nigerian student particularly are happy. Our parents are happy that, yes, in Nigeria, even the children of the poor can have access to quality education. We see Mr. President's commitment and the signing of the bill today. It shows that uh, Mr. President is a father of modern education in Nigeria. And the initiator of this bill is a hero of education. What is left now will be to see the first students that will benefit from this loan scheme. From the Presidential Villa, Lanre Lassisi, Channels Television News. Welcome back. Let's now talk about that uh, signing into law of the Students Loan Bill. Now it's an act. Now it becomes a law for students to be able to access a uh, loan for their tertiary education. It's a range of annotations that was done on the first bill that was initially signed by the president. It was repealed, reenacted, and now the changes have been reflected. And we've been joined in the program by the president, National Association of Nigerian Students, Mr. Loki Omonofe. Mr. Omonofe, thank you for coming on the program. Good morning and good morning, viewers. Uh, Mr. Omonofe, uh, let's begin with some housekeeping um, as to the status of NAN's leadership. Uh, on one hand, there is a group that supports you, Lucky, and there's another group that supports Pedro Obi. Can you help us clear all of that uh, controversy about the leadership of NAS before we get to this issue of students' loan? You know, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm the undisputed leader of NAS. There's no controversy about it. You know, in NAS, those who lost out of elections will always want to come up with the two are. It's undisputed that, yes, of course, I'm the national president of NAMS. 
the education sector, even the Nigeria student knows their president. And of course, we we'll make so many impacts on Western. So there is no argument about the issue of NANS leadership. Like the one that appeared yesterday is one of the leaders of the association, I think so. I was talking about the bill and he's not acquitted. He has not even seen the repeal or the reenactment of that bill. He's not conversant with the document itself. So we can disregard that. Well, uh, that's not why we brought you, but of course, uh, at some point, that conversation will be brought to the fore. But let's talk about this particular bill. Um, what is the reception so far from the students' community? Are the students satisfied with, from your end, from what they've seen? I know they've not seen this law in totality, the signed one, uh, but there was a policy note that guided as to what changes will be effected from structure uh, to all of the elements of that particular bill. What's the reception like? Yes, uh, with so much joy and happiness, the students were elated, they are happy. I think uh, yesterday I was in the University of Abuja, where we have about uh, 2,000 students. We are addressing them, telling them the changes, those areas that were so stringent for them that have been removed. So the students are excited, they are happy, and they can't wait for the full implementation of this uh, scheme. And I think it will have a turnaround in the education sector. Even parents too can't wait, especially those who can afford to pay the fees of their children and uh, their kids as well. So, two days since uh, it was enacted into law by the president, the president appended his signature. Uh, I think the big question on the minds of people will be when will they be able to now access the loans? When will they be able to? Uh, apply for it and access it. Is this going to take months? Is it a matter of months, years? Because they've waited for so long. This announcement was made last year, by the way, and we're nearing the middle of the year, and it looks like it's not starting. So when do you hear that this will start exactly? Okay, I know in the coming week, the, there are going to be destruction. And when the structure is put in place, like, you know, the management structure, according to the reenactment, the new one now, uh, is going to be in place immediately. I know Mr. President is not going to waste time in it. And uh, immediately they kickstart it, we are going to do quick sensitization, how students will apply, how to get it, the categories, you know, it's categorized into theory. So how they are going to assess it, especially we need to do proper orientation because we want a situation whereby our student can assess it with high numbers of students assessing, and that is the purpose. So when so students are not even aware that this student condition has been removed, so we need to do proper sensitization. And I know in the shortest period of time now, they are going to kickstart. Once they announce the new board, the managing director with the directors, of course, work will start immediately. Uh, we are going to do sensitization across all our campuses so that students, the app will be immediately be launched. You know, the other time, they want to launch the app, but because of the thing was not properly structured, some interests were not captured, and there are areas we raise of concern that need to be amended. I think this is the reason why they say, okay, let's do it properly before we kickstart the process so that Nigeria student can benefit massively from this uh, uh, scheme. Uh, so in the shortest period of time, we have confidence that it will start. Okay, Mr. Manofa, you talked about what it lacked in the previous act, how, especially talking about recovering these loans. In this new act now, what is the process like? How uh, possible will it be, especially in terms of initiating enforcement in trying to recover these loans? And how easy will it be for these students when they are ready to pay back? Okay, like the payment, the repayment plan is that uh, when you start working, it is 10% deduction monthly from your salary. Then even after NYC, two years, no work, and they will initiate a repayment, uh, the NEF fund will initiate a repayment process. You, as a beneficiary, you now have the right to swear affidavit 
that look at this, look at this, look at this. I'm not yet working and I can't pay now. They will give you what you call extension. There is room for extension of loan until you start receiving something. So these are little changes and it's beneficial to Nigeria students as well. Then there is equally provision for for forgiveness, loan forgiveness as well too. That uh, uh, if, for instance, by accident or any other uh, uh, thing happen, either death or any other issue, or you are sick and it is confirmed, of course, the NEFON can do what we call no loan forgiveness. Then during the public hearing, I think we make a case, and this can be part of the policy because the board has right to make other policy for the running of the 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 funds. So we make a case during the public hearing that students that are brilliant, that are sharp, that can come out with first class, of course, there should be room for no forgiveness too. I think this can come as a part of policy during the management or they can develop that policy. That have, don't have to be in the act particularly. We make case for that. So that at least we know that these students are brilliant, they can take their studies seriously, of course. They can have forgiveness, especially those who have first class as well. And we equally make case that, of course, uh, those who get this loan, employment advantage should be given to them too. So I think we are in the right direction. I want to thank Mr. President for this. We are in the right direction. When you say employment advantage should be given to those who get this loan, what do you mean? Like, for instance, when I said those who graduated and they have not been able to uh, get job, either through government or private sector, of course, they should be considered maybe in terms of application, maybe where we have like 100 people to be taken, those people can be given some level of percentage so that they can't. Because the essence, according to Mr. President, is that if the form comes back, others can benefit from the process so that it will be a continuous process so i'm i'm bringing this in as a way of getting the funds so that it will be a continuous process because when they pay it back other people can get from it too so does this uh, cover this is just basically because i know that there were included vocational and uh, vocational studies uh people in tertiary, okay. in tertiary institution does this cover postgraduate as well no, there is no postgraduate. Okay, I just wanted, I just wanted that to be on record. Now, as a student's body, um, laws. We don't have a problem with laws in Nigeria. We have loads of laws. Implementation is always the issue. As a student's body, now it is now body corporate with a common seal and a perpetual succession. It can be sue and uh, can sue. What is Nans preparing for in terms of projection in case the managers of this fund? are not living up to expectation. Okay, good. That's why we have, we want and we advocated, and I think it has been captured, that students should have a representative who will protect the interest of Nigeria students there, that we monitor, supervise the process. And I think in the new act now, the one that I just signed, there's a representative of students. The essence is that the loan is all about students. And we should have someone who will speak for the yearning and the aspiration, the interest of Nigeria students in it. There, we equally advocated that in the board or in the management, people with student-oriented uh, 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 ability should be allowed because they know what students pass through, they know what students feel, and they can at least protect the interest of Nigeria students who have student-oriented background should always be allowed to handle this issue. Then on our own, as leaders of Nigeria students, we are going to monitor the process to ensure that there is effective implementation for the benefit of Nigeria students. The truth is that I think I was in University of Abuja yesterday, and uh, the students were excited, they were happy that, of course, they do not have access. Nobody will complain that, ah, uh, I don't have money, I can't attain uh, higher education anymore. So, of course, students are happy. I will monitor the process, we'll give our students proper orientation 
during the process. Yeah. Thank you very much. So I need us to define what loan means, really, so we can manage expectations properly. So does it mean it will cover the tuition and accommodation in its entirety? So imagine my, I'm attending the University of Ibado, and my tuition is 150,000 naira, uh, accommodation is 50,000 naira. This is just hypothetical, by the way. So a total of 200,000 naira, is that what I will get from government or government has a threshold that it will give, maybe it will give me 100,000 naira or more to cover that. So let's define what student loans mean in our own context. Okay, the, the loan itself is in different categories. First, if the one for tuition fee, those are like in federal institution, there is no tuition fee. The one for tuition fee where we have state investors, you can apply for tuition fee. That one will be paid directly to the school accounts. That is the management. Then you have the one for rent. That one will be paid directly to your landlord. The students as well to equally have rights to apply for pocket money. That one will be paid directly to the student for the upkeep. In the art, it is called upkeep. So you have right to equally apply. Within, I think it's within from the range of fifty to five hundred thousand. You can apply, depending on the fee, and it will be categorized. It will be stated, of course, so that you pay even those your departmental charges, development uh, levy. They are part of the fees you pay. That is for the tuition. Then, the, if you are in the school hostel, they will pay directly to the school account. I think if you are outside of campus, they will pay to your landlord. The students who have right to apply. For instance, in a semester where you have like three to four months, if your feeding is 30,000, it means you can apply for the semester. 40, 40, or 30,000 will be given to you for your feeding as well. So it is in different categories, of course. All right, Mr. Monofa, before you go, just very quickly, I know that this loan is for federal and state universities, polytechnics, and colleges of education. But in the future, are you seeing plans for probably collaboration with private universities? Because everyone deserves access also to a loan. I mean, we're all citizens. Do you see in future private universities, uh, students being able to access these loans for private universities? And the purpose of it will be defeated. I think uh, we must, we, I think Mr. President stated it the day we were signing this uh, bill, that it is not for private investing at all. I'm talking it about is the for future. Public. Uh, the, the future, I don't think we should strengthen the public one. I won't advocate for private. We should strengthen the public one so that we can make our public institutions and uh, 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 university to be very okay. If you have money, you can send your children to private, it means you are you have the fund. But those who don't have money, of course, and government can assist them. That is the purpose. Why they say okay, it should be for public schools only. All right, Mr. Manofe, thank you so much for, of course, your insights on this particular issue. But uh, I am sure you're also telling them that uh, if they lie, if, if they make false statement. Uh, they'll be guilty of felony and they may go to jail for three years. Uh, I hope that's part of the conversation because you must provide for this um, behavior in the law. I just wanted to find that out from you. Okay, that will be part of our uh, sensitization to, so that you don't give false information. You don't give false information because you will be charged for that. Of course, we'll do sensitization about it to uh, let our students know that you have to be objective, to be honest with the information you provide right. as well, so that you, you don't, uh, then I think I want to uh, quickly state this clearly, that we welcome these developments and we are very happy, excited about it as well. All right. Lucky Emenofe, President National Association of Nigerian Students, uh, joining us to explain uh, the backstory as well as the the new law that has been, the, the new uh, legislation that has just been signed by the president concerning students' loan. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be on your studio. Thank you very much. Absolutely. So we'll switch gears now. I talk about a bit of music and we'll switch gears from music to some other things. So get ready. It's going to be just a great ride from here. But join us after the break. We'll tell you why.
just makes everything feel good, especially when you're in a very bad mood. So today we're going to be putting a little music into your life to start off your weekend. And with us today, we have Odulami Oluwa Damilare from Oyo State. Of course, we'll be talking more about himself. But he's popularly known as Faluya of Africa, which means like teardrum, something like that. But he's known for his genius ability to mix music, remixing. He also does a lot of social media remixes. If you know some of those very viral tunes that go out, and then he just brings them and just remixes them, puts beats, and just makes it sound very, very nice. He's also known for his own original inspirational hit music releases and he also has a new album titled One of a Kind. But let me talk, let me allow him talk about himself. Dre Sticks. Good welcome. morning. Good morning. Should, we, should we clap for him? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dre Sticks in the building. Dre Sticks thank in you, the thank building. You. It feels really good to be here. All right. Morning. So how yeah. do you feel um, in this world of, or in this industry, in the whole the whole thing that happens in the industry with your uh, colleagues trying to also produce. I know that you have a studio also mixing everything, your own inspirational music with music production, setting up studios. How do you even put all of these together? Okay, so first of all, um, Dre Sticks is a recording artist and a record producer, so I double us both. And it's all about the passion for me. That's why I say all the time. You understand? It's all about how passionate you are for what you're doing for your craft you understand so once you're passionate enough it won't be a struggle you know, just do everything yeah interesting uh i know that you have a very rich background in music i mean oh. <laughs> and said you're from your state so i know you have a background in ibado as well and oh, i always yeah. say great things start from ibado yes i'm biased here. yes we are biased <laughs> great things start from ibado i agree argue with your keypads as they say <laughs> your so, so walk us through your 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 journey where you started from and how you've gotten to where you are right now you, you're an independent artist of course i believe so you can t tell us about the the peculiarity of independent artists much later, but we want to know your story, Trey Sticks. All right, so um, I started music as a little drummer boy in church, like everybody would say, they started from church. I also started from the church. I was about 10, 11, I started playing the drums, the nice. side drum, you know. Then when I was a teenager, I picked up other instruments and, you know, I was just playing, you know, different churches and others. I was actually being paid as a, you know, so that's like my first employment as a, yeah, so I was being paid as low as 600 naira salary in a month. <laughs> that, was a lot, that was minimum that wage. Was, yeah, that was a long time ago, you understand? Know, and it was something for me back yeah. then, you understand? Know, so, so all of this, um, the fact that I was doing, playing music, singing in the choir, all of this was like grooming for me, you understand? Know, I didn't even know it was really going to go far. So um, that helped me build my wealth of knowledge and music, you understand, which has really helped me. So I grew up in Ibadan, I started music in Ibadan, I went to university, I studied urban and regional planning, but when I was in school, I already knew music was a thing for me, I was going to do music profession. I just went to school to be learned, for real, you mm -hmm. understand. So yeah, so immediately I finished uni, I just ported back to Lagos, like, okay, Lagos is where it's happening. So I had to come and face the struggle, that's about over a decade ago. Uh -huh. Yeah, so yeah. So urban and regional planning to urban and music. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are in the music industry and so far so good i'm grateful to god yeah so there are labels that have a collection of artists and then you see that they are shining lights within those um labels but sometimes we forget that there are other artists under that label that are not doing as well as they should do despite the structure of a label you are an indie yeah. Artists. So I can imagine how challenging that will be. Walk us through that process of being an indie artist. Okay, so first of all, um, being an independent artist in Nigeria is not easy because music is expensive now. Music is very expensive. So you just have to, you need a strategy to come out. Um, like I said first, um, initially, you have to be very passionate. If you're not passionate enough, enough you you fall off, you understand? Because when imagine a creative who doesn't have sponsors, who doesn't have any means to just get out, you get discouraged and you just like, let me go get something else to do, you understand? So, um, what really helped me is the fact that I'm an artist, I'm also a producer. So, 
I produce other people, you know, I make money from producing other people. So that really helped me like set up my studio and with that I can finance my own music, you understand? So basically that's my own story, yeah. Uh, Joysticks, I mean, let's, because it was International Women's Day just a few <coughs> weeks ago, you know, I know that you also remix some of those viral tunes that go, you make them into very nice beats. So let's dedicate one of those beats to women. There was one you did. So I think we'll, let's, let's just take a look oh, at yeah. that one that you, you just did. You almost mm -hmm. tore that drum. That's you know where it. your name came from. You so you're it. a fantastic drummer. Thank How you. did you receive that when you saw the whole, I mean, I know it went viral also. Of you course. remixing that. Of a course. lot of people posted it and it was like, wow, even Joker Silva and all those yeah, people who danced there reached out to you. So how did yeah. you feel? Okay, so shout outs to the Hear What group. That's the group. It's like yes. a group of women, arts and music. You understand? So I think I was just chilling in the lounge some time some years ago you understand i just randomly saw the material because me the way it works for me is i if it doesn't hit me i won't do it you understand because a lot of people tag me at different times like do this one do this one do this one but the moment i saw that video i just left we were just chilling i just left like i went to the studio street i just touched refixed reproduced it tomorrow the following morning i put it out and it started going viral immediately you understand so for me it's when i feel it i know something is about to happen so yeah that's that's like a kind of a green classic refix i did yeah uh, the, the song means uh, i would have my child yeah uh, yeah it's basically a song about uh, for mother motherhood in yeah. fact fathers can also borrow from me <laughs> of course but this one was left aside. Uh, kind of dedicating this one, this one to women uh, women's and mothers was, it was in march this is april this is april so this is fathers so and men's no we are celebrated <laughs> every day no but we celebrate we celebrate women so many times in the we year. We give you guys one month, just, just one month in the year. A second. That's not fair, <laughs> please. <laughs> but you know. 8 December. <laughs> Right, so you get a lot of attention from all of these um, remixes you do. And this is not the first, you've done quite a number and it looks like you're, you're not relenting. But the, the point that Jeffrey made as well, just to piggyback off it, do, do you think you maybe uh, would have even been bigger than you are? Yes, you're big, we must give that to you, but even much bigger than you are if you were part of a label, if you were signed to a label. And why did you decide to go independent? Did you have a taste of label? And it tasted like vinegar. You said, never will I taste this again. Okay, so truthfully, I've been around for a while. You know, so I'm not a new cat, you yeah. understand? So I've been ah, around you're not a new for cat, a while. I see. And <laughs> thankfully, one way or the other, I've been relevant in the music industry. As a producer, as a songwriter, as an artist, as a sound engineer, I also do mixing and mastering for a lot of songs people hear out there. So um, for me, I've seen a lot of people rise and fall. I've seen a lot of situations. I've seen a lot of artists. I've seen a lot of... You know, I've seen a lot of things that have helped me to decide, okay, this is what I want to do, this is not what I want to do. You know, you see a lot of liberals out there, you see them dr driving the fast cars, you know, flamboyant lifestyle, and sometimes, deep down, it's slavery. You know, not for all of them, but some of them, they just give them these things. If you check their bank accounts, there's nothing. If you check their streaming realities, they are more like it's rip-off, you understand? So any record label, owner, any investor is a businessman. They are just loaning you, you understand? So you have to pay back. And a lot of times it becomes, you know, it becomes 
problem eventually at the end of the day. So, but a few ones out there that really work well and the artist and the investor, you understand? So I really don't just want to, I like my, I don't like what, I like my sanity and I'm a product of growth, you know, so right. I like my growth. I've been growing gradually, so I'm not desperate, you understand? So Have I'm you fine. ever tested the label life? Um, not really. What I've done before is it was more like a family thing, you understand? Not really like I got signed to a label and pen to paper and like I'm under pressure and all of that. So I've seen But have, have you been approached by a label before? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, at this point, at this point, if I'm going to be signed under it, because myself, my brand, I have my own brand too. So if I'm going to be signed under any label it has to be an international brand like it has to really come correct you understand there is no record label there are great record labels in nigeria you understand but not too many of them you understand so if i'm going to sign a deal maybe a maybe partnership yeah. you understand not like you're signing me solely we are we want to do business because so that's exactly what's going on in nigeria yeah. uh, the mavens and uh uh, YBNL, YBNL, and all of this, they have that relationship with likes. international rap. But have you yeah. been able to reach out to those global? Recently, we, we saw what Don Jazzy did with UMG yeah, exactly. and all of that. But yes. have you been able to reach out to any of these rap? Yes. Are you putting yourself out there to, yeah, so, to have a conversation? Yeah, least? most of these guys, I one way or the other, I know most of these guys, most of these top dogs, they know me. I don't think there is anybody in the entertainment space that has, that has not heard of Dre Sticks, Valley of Africa. One way or the other, you know me, you understand? So I know most of these guys, and yeah, I know them. And you know, if I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the kind of person who I don't chase people, I don't lobby, you understand? So I believe in when the interest is mutual, that's when it's going to because you have a fallback thing too. You have something you can fall back to because there are people that come out like, look, I just they may not have the liberty or the leverage, I should say of your kind of ability to produce songs as they just they just know how to sing yes. they just want to. yes so, so why do you think you're on, very comfortable with they jump you on are? anything they yeah. jump on any offer they see you understand so i've just been fortunate to you know to see you know lots of experiences lots of other people's experiences so mm. i've been laid back and i've never been desperate you understand all right so yeah. let's talk about your new album titled one of a kind what inspired this album and what's the genre like? What does he sound like? What are you hoping to achieve with this new album? Okay, so um, my new album, One of a Kind, is very special to me. I have said it before and I'm going to say it again on Channels TV. My sound, it's really one of a kind when you listen to the album because my sound is different. My sound is not what you get to hear every day is unique you understand that's the brand i intend to sell to the global world markets you understand so um one of a kind 10 tracks album 10 classics evergreen classics and um i produced nine tracks oh. on the album so there is one gospel track, the last track I produced, I co-produced with my friend SMJ, you understand? So, and the fact that I produced the entire album is very intentional because I want the, I want it to sound an exact way, you understand? So produced, mixed and mastered by me, so you understand? So, yeah, one of a kind, it's really one of a kind. People should go stream the album, yeah. Uh, so, uh, SMJ, uh, SMJ worked with Tim Godfrey. Yeah, I yeah, that's So there's still that church boy yeah. in you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Yeah. So I, I um I I listened to some of the songs on the album. There's a particular one that has a fella feel. Yeah. I Afibati. Know, Afibati, right? And I, I like the way you infuse that. The way the vocals you you're obviously showing off, which is okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're okay. Allow me to show off. This is yours, it's your <laughs> you're talent. So show, up, don't worry. Yes. <laughs> so show up and and I must say that it, it it's a very good tune. It's kind of tune that takes you places. Yeah. And you know that, that they say music needs no permission to yeah. enter your spirit. It was yeah. more bad's uh, song that said that. So I need to commend you for that. Fantastic, Thank you very much. Fantastic work you're doing. Thank but you. speak to us about um, what is the future for you, really. Uh, we know that you are creative, but I need to say that that artists also need to add value to themselves. So don't just stay with being a vocalist. Learn production, yeah. learn to play an instrument. Yeah. So if something yeah. happens to your vocals, or yeah. at least that's not thriving, you can do other things. Or be a content creator. So 
what is the future for you? You're okay. not signed to a record label. Maybe yeah. you will sign a record label right under you. Right. But what is the future? Right. So um, my brand is FOA Music, Fali of Africa. And my whole ideology for now is <clears throat> projecting my sound, my music, to the global market. That's like my dream. I want to like this because if you hear tomorrow that Dre Sticks <coughs> won a Grammy, it's still going to be this with the same sound. You understand? So I intend that would be like a dream come true for me to project this sound on a global music market. And I also aspire to eventually get to sign all our talented upcoming arts. You understand? So basically, yeah, that's. That's it for now. And Bukola was looking for a label. <laughs> I was looking for a label. Oh, yeah. she wants to get signed into Bukola is a good rapper. Okay. I, I guess I'll, I'll sign on her behalf. Have you signed? Uh, uh, what do you do? Are you, are you an artist I can too? sing. Oh, really? Uh -uh. Oh, she sings really Okay, well. no, you send your demo. So, yeah. be, before we begin to do the signing, <laughs> before we begin to do the signing, let, let's, let's take your assessment of the industry generally. All right. A lot has happened. We've recorded successes, we've recorded backlashes and failures and all of these things. So, if you were to give a record, an international record label, um, an overview of this industry, uh, what would you be telling them? Because it's based on your observation. So we need to acknowledge the fact that the Nigerian music industry has really grown. We have really evolved from what it used to be, you understand? Talking about the fact that independent artists can put out their music and they can make money off from it independently without going through any label. The Afro, the Nigerian, uh, the mainstream uh, Afrobeats has really gone global and you know, the likes of the Bonner Boys, the Whiskeys, the Davidus and the, all the A-listers, you understand? So they have really put Nigeria on the map globally. And back then it used to be just one artist to reigning all through the year. Now we can have like 10, 15, 20 artists reigning at the same time. Everybody's doing fine, everybody's cashing out, everybody. So it has really grown, and you understand? So um, another thing I would say is the fact that, yeah, social media, social media is like a blessing and a cost, you understand? So yeah, you know what I'm talking about? So talking about the downfalls, talking about the, you know, the backlashes and all of that people get. So it's all about what how you want to use it you understand you can be you you can use it to be a blessing and you can also lose God and use it and it will be your downfall you understand so basically that's my assessment so far all right so let's listen to one of your online collabs I call it collab because I love how you oh, mix yeah. it so let's have another <laughs> one. Oh yeah <laughs> When, when, when I saw this, I had to ask you, do you have any Muslim background? Because it's amazing how you are very versatile with, if it's Christianity, you do it well. If it's Muslim, if it's Islamic, if it's traditional, you kind of know how to put out yourself there and make people think that you're actually part of this. Look at how you took that nice Islamic song and turned it into another beautiful thing. How do you even do this? First of all, it's a reflection of my personality and my ideologies about life. Uh, when it comes to religion, I don't segregate. I'm a Christian, that's my faith, but I don't segregate. I don't think, uh, I don't just segregate when it comes to religion. So it also reflects in my craft, my music, yeah. my creativity. Music is an art, sure. you understand? So. Yeah. Art is not restricted, you understand? So I don't bring in religion into, I'm just being an artist. All right. Just get creative, just get creative and do my thing. Basically, that's it. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Dolami Oluwada Milari, also known as Dre Stakes, and well done on your new album, One of a Kind. We wish you the very best. Thanks for coming on the show. 
Thank you so much. You're also one of a kind, I shall say. Yeah, also Thank one you. of a kind. Thank so you. well you done. You are one of a kind. Too. <laughs> you guys are one of a kind. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for so coming much. on the program. My pleasure. Flexibility, mobility, exercise is what we're getting into this morning. What is a morning brief without some movement? We have Coach Beauty Musa joining us on the show to do what she knows how to do best. Drill us. Coach Beauty, it's good to see you. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy you to are ready for us today. I'm yeah. ready. Yeah. You guys should take it easy on me. because <laughs> no, we're just dancing. Okay, we're just dancing. Yeah. Okay. So we've got, uh, these are called dumbbells. Dumbbells. Right. So this is a 3 kg dumbbell. Anne's got a 2 this kg dumbbell. This can do my muscle now. Jeffrey is like a 50 kg dumbbell. I mean, so what are we doing with this? Okay. okay. Uh, we are just going to talk about why we need to add weight into our training regimen. Right. Okay. Because as, uh, when you start working out, uh, the body starts requesting for more. Mm -hmm. So it is ideal whenever you're doing any aerob aerobics aer um, exercises, you add light weight. Most people will say, I don't have a dumbbell. You can use water, water bottles. Right. Two bottles, small, um, half a liter of water, water Beautiful. bottles. Yeah, you can CL. hold it. Yeah, that's it. 75 cl. Okay. So you can use it during exercises. It has a way of helping you to burn more calories. Where you're supposed to burn 100 calories, you're burning like 150 calories. For those of us who need calories, how we burn? What are we burn? <laughs> for those of you that need a uh, calories you need to eat well while working out so that your body tone is out Strength. so we can okay. have more muscles and more there you go so we have music and I think we can get into this. So, coach, what you have, so do you, you want to leave in front or are um, you, you okay? Uh, no, that's are we okay? Like so good we are just right. doing like three step movements. Okay. Right. One, two, three, tap. One, two, three, tap. Woo. One, two, three. Good. Yeah. Jeff is there. Yo. I is there. You plan on directing me in this uh, exercise thing. Now, arm movement. Coordination. Let's go. That's it. That's it. That's it. Now, Jeff, I need you to put some, some swag, you know, some swag into it. Yeah, let me, you let got me, it. Let me get the reading You got it. Hey. Good. 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 Uh, wait, is this exercise Good. I'm enjoying? Beautiful. You got it. In. Good. Good. Hey. Now, push up. One. Jump. Jump. Move me, me. Move it, me. Good, good, that's it, that's it, that's it, you got it, jump, stretch your arms up, Annie, stretch your arms up, K, stretch your arms up, that's it, that's it, that's it, good. I'm feeling it in my muscle now, yeah, yeah. good, 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 now take your right knee up, Left knees up, up. Right knees up, up. Left knees up, jump. Right knees up. Good. Ooh. You're getting it. You're getting it. Good. Now drop your arms while you take your knees up, up. Good. You got it. Good. Good. Elbows to your knees. Let's go. Touch it, jab. Touch it, oh. jab. Left knees to your right elbow. Okay. Left knees to your left oh. elbow. Right knees to your left elbow. Okay. Left knees to your right elbow. Let's go. Come on. Oh, I'm missing. I'm missing it. You're almost there. Come on. Up. No, jab. Okay. Jab. Come on. Up. Let's go. Jab. <laughs> That's what we got. I don't want to do don't yeah. worry, just move, yeah. just about yeah. there. Yeah. Good. Let's go, Annie. Anne, you're doing fine. Let's go. Okay. Go. go. All right. It. That was really very good. Now walk it out. That's it. That was good. Very good. We have to do that one again. No. Uh, now, I mean, for people I that have Christian mother arms, and you need to work on those Christian mother arms. Let me add my own for makeup. You need this with. Yeah, yeah. Makeup. Are you ready? Shoulder width apart, your leg shoulder width apart. Take your arms down. Take a bow. All right, now you just squeeze it. Squeeze it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five, four, three, two, and one. That was very good, very good. Now you can drop the weight, let's cool down. Like I said, I didn't. Want, I don't want to overwork you. All right, now cool down. And oh, the usual. Your arms forward. <coughs> Good. 
and take it down. Very good. Oh, I love it. Now straight sideways. Your knees good. Okay. Uh, like Place that. your hands there. Annie, baby. Where's your hand? Yeah. Your right leg. Yeah. Where's your hand? I can't see your hands on my knees. Okay. Okay. Right. Straight to the other. Look at Kyrie. Anna. Look at Kyrie. Anna. Look at Kyrie. <laughs> Okay, uh -huh. okay. You're supposed to be standing in front okay, of us so, so like we can a, see you. Yeah, you can see. You got something we can see. Oh, yeah, see. <laughs> right, let's yeah. forward this. Uh -huh. really? So we can see. Yeah. Better for us. Stretch it out. Stretch it down. Stretch it up. Working your flexibility. Mm. Oh. Stretch it out. This makes me remember Stretch a dance step. Oh. Take it out. All right. Do you remember this dance step? And up. <laughs> Which one? Take it forward and roll back. <laughs> and up. Ooh. All right, side dance, side dance, side dance. I know Jeff would like this one. Okay. Let's go. Yes, Anne, you're getting the ball. Anne, I need you to move your waist, okay? Let's go. One, oh. two, three, go. Take your arms up. Two, three. Jeff, now, Jeff, move with me. Mm -hmm. You got it now, yeah. Good. Well done, Kayode, you're doing fine. That's it. Anne That's is it. getting an A in this That's one. It. Yes, I'm getting That's an A in this one. We know why now. It. That's it. Eh? Up, in, up. Good! Uh-huh. That's Coyote. That's Annie. See there. That's Jeffrey. Let's go. Top. Yeah. Two. Oh, I'm there. <laughs> oh, I'm there Friday, right? Six, seven. All right, just cool it down, okay? Cool it down. Cool down. Cool down. And cool down. Now take it up. Up, stretch, up, up, stretch it back. Good, you feel good. Absolutely. And down. Thank you very much. We are okay with it. No At least, today so no. on this show, Kyrie, we have to do that dumbbell part again. Today on this no, show, I am happy. Wait, wait, wait. Let's start to this. Every day on this show, yeah. I, I, I'm almost the last person to catch up. Today, Jeffrey got an A. No, 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 no. I was ahead of you now. I will only make one. I will only make one. He got an A. Yeah. So, I love the dumbbell part because it sort of added another layer. Yeah, into it. Yeah, so just to reiterate, that dumbbell part. Can we just run over it again briefly for those who yeah, have missed because it? Because they actually, I think it's a no, very good addition. No, you have to stand addition. in front. So can, can yeah, I think okay. you should yeah, stand. Yeah, it helps us. No, 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 no let me not cover that. <coughs> yeah, you need to add weight into your exercise regimen okay. to help you burn more calories. Yes. Okay. Where so. you're burning 200 calories, you find yourself burning 300 calories right. when you okay. add dumbbells into it. The dumbbell shouldn't be the big one. The big one is for bodybuilders, right. but use lightweight. It is compulsory you use light I want this what I'm holding here is one kg. One point, one, my own is 1.5. 1.5 and kind of has three, three kg. Yeah. So you shouldn't do more than four kg when you're doing aerobics. Don't do, don't carry two bigger weights. Use lighter weights. If you don't have weight, use seven 75 cl. 75 cl, water. two small bottles, and you still get it right. <clears throat> So, so okay. let, no, just let's do that routine just for a minute. Don't no, we're ready for you. We've got some <laughs> elastic so, yeah, so strength today. Just so. a minute. Just, All right. Just go one. Go so. again. All right. Now let's go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five, four, three, two, one, two. Three. Ah, what are you doing? What? What is Jeff? Come on. Ah, let me say, let me say, catwalk. It's a move. Just take your legs back, okay? Working your hands. Hands stop catwalking. Annie, okay. baby, you're doing fine. Hands stop catwalking. Okay. Oh my God. Hands stop. Okay, let me raise it. Raise Just it. Down. Raise up. Beautiful. All right, take it down. Side to side movement. Wow. Everyone is uniform today. Yes, sir. Hands. Oh. Jeff, what happened? Oh, with I missed my. Jeff, walk with me. Jeff, walk with me. Come on. We do. Jeff, let's go. Let's go, let's go. That's it. Yes, Jeff is there. No pain, no gain. No fun, no gain. So, this is for the people that. You should um, pain. Let's help you get better. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> this is for strength, for flexibility. Put some muscles. Yes. And those biceps. And take it down. All right. Drop. I'm tempted to dance to this tune. And I remember <laughs> when we exercise. Breathe in. Right. And breathe out. Breathe in. 
what we just did works your core flexibility strength training mm. agility and it helps you boost your body metabolism thank you uh, how do you advise us to exercise in the heat because <laughs> the heat is quite intense yeah so your tummy is not you don't want to lose too much of you know water. the water but you also need to keep fit we need to do this so how can we keep our exercise uh, optimum or in an optimal way and still maintain that water during this heat yeah we advise you always carry your water along with you when you're working mm. out okay. that's just the only how thing. much water can you drink how much water can you drink how tasty are you exercise. how tasty are you well uh, when you're working out you, you shouldn't this, take too much people, yeah. no because uh, if you take too much it's going yeah. to be too bulky for you to carry yourself so it's better okay. you just take a little sip just make sure that your your quench your you quench your thirst and then you just go ahead and go back to exercising i need to also ask there are some people who do sports and after like three minutes of maybe running it's either football basketball or tennis they start feeling pains in their stomach. I don't know what that pain is called, but it's usually intense. So how can you, I don't know if you guys feel that pain uh, too. So is no, it a starter no. thing, or because you didn't warm up well, how can you guard against it? Because it can be very painful. It's lactic acid deposit. It's something that you can't avoid. Usually we call it the sweet pain, because when we say no pain, no gain, if you're not working out and you're not feeling that pain, it means you're not doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. So the pain will come, but it will go as, at the same way that it came. So it's actually ideal to have those pains though when you're doing it correctly the pains are bound to come they are just lactic acid deposit they clear out with time i think it's almost the same as when you just start um exercises for the first time you know that pain you feel yes. but uh, gradually as you keep doing it it'll eventually go it eventually goes and most people even start having um, malaria their malaria yes that that malaria that body. comes out because if you have um, the malaria parasite in you okay. when you start working out it now brings, brings out the full-blown malaria and you, you get better but you have to yeah. go back the exercise that, 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 that's also remind me you know some people when i used to do better building believe it or not i used to do that so really yes i used to <coughs> i used to a lot yeah. so well, after a while when you wow. stop uh it's like uh, sometimes like your what do they call this joint now it's just this uh, this joint the it's almost like it disconnects you feel like it's disconnected what does that mean it's it's it, it's it, most people when they carry too heavy weight it mm. happens we've okay. had people at the gym the joint will just disconnect but oh. if they have a yeah, very good person they push it they push it back in it's actually some things that happens in the gym ah coach oh. beauty musa i need to say that you do not look your age <laughs> and this is a secret should i tell people coach musa's age no Beauty, should do I you want no that's if yeah. she wants it yeah. should i tell, tell you know what head. you know do it yourself coach, need to coach know Beauty. tell them that you need to work your body elasticity so that yeah. when you're growing old it doesn't show coach oh, Beauty, wow. if you don't mind me asking how old are you i'm 51 plus Yes. No. It's 51 plus. No, look at the camera. Which wow. camera can she wow. look at? Wow. Is it this one? Okay, look at that camera. She's, she's 51. Look at this. She's 51 plus. She's wow. married, by the way. She's married. So please. Hey, she's 51. She's wow. <laughs> 51. She's everything. That's Good what Beauty Musa, yeah. CEO, well done. aerobics and beauty spa. Mm. She's a fitness, as you can see, and wellness. wellness. Let me add beauty expert <laughs> to this one. Thank you so much for coming through. We are glad. We feel Thank stressed. You. We feel healthier. And we look forward to doing this again. Thank you again. We always love you for your time. Thank you. And I'm trying out. Yeah, for first you're time for me, oh. I mean, it was you very nice. Yes. You tried. You really did. Because no, I have I'm a gym actually. You know. But you know, I use my eyes exercise. When I just see the equipment, I'm like, okay, you're fine, you're fine. But I don't go there. All right, guys, All we right, have guys. to run out. It's been such a great time ending on a high. And that's a cue for you to also stay healthy, okay? Whether you're at work, at home, in the market, make sure you find time to stay healthy, drink water, eat healthy. Well, this has been the show today. But not to forget, Sunrise Daily is up in just about a month. Yeah. Minutes, so do not go anywhere. Stay with Channels Television. I'm Kai Odeo All right, thank you guys. We'll see you next week. Have a wonderful weekend. I'm Anwar Odeo. Sign out. I'm Jeff Uzama. Bye bye. Woo.